Joining us now is, drum roll. <laughs> OG Nika, OG, Akbe, with stories trending around the world. Did I do all right? No. Yes, yes. Hello, Genix. I forgot you forgot that. that. <laughs> Good oh, morning. No. How are you guys this morning? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Feeney. Good morning, Genix. The great Malabai. Yes, so yes. what's trending today? <laughs> Good morning, Rafai. How are so, you? Sundu, you know, in a robot, there's something called Atia Boke. Yes, clap. I'm yes. clapping for you. Thank you. Oh, he's always been nice. Thank okay, you. You, you did. No, you did excellent. Tuesday oh, was Tuesday was yeah. excellent. Today was ninety nine point nine percent. That's very generous of you. Thank you. Okay, okay, we we'll wait for Just tomorrow. Give hundred. Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred. Hundred for you. Thank you. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump invoked his Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination on Wednesday as he testified under oath in New York at U.S. Attorney General Letitia James's Manhattan office. The questioning brought him face to face with the Attorney General, who he had called an out-of-control prosecutor and a racist. In Nigeria, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has revealed that his campaign council, which he says will be different from others, will be inaugurated before the end of this month. We are no longer going to send funds through three or four party leaders. We send funds direct to the polling unit management committees because the polling unit management committee has a chairman, has a secretary, you have the canvassers, you have the polling agent. <clears throat> Under sports, 23-time Grand Slam champion Serena Williams lost to Belinda Bensick on Wednesday night in the second round of a hard-court tune-up match for the U.S. Open. It came a day after the 40-year-old star announced that the countdown has begun on her playing career, saying she wants to have another child and pursue business interests. It's just been so memorable, you know. Like I said in my article, I'm terrible at goodbyes, but uh, goodbye. Then... Vanessa Bryant, widow of the late NBA legend Kobe Bryant, is seeking unspecified millions in compensation for snapshots of her late husband's corpse that were circulated after he was killed in a helicopter crash with their daughter, Gianna Bryant, and seven others in 2020 at the invasion of privacy trial against the Los Angeles County Sheriff and fire departments which began on Wednesday, Vanessa Bryant claimed that deputies who arrived at the scene of the crash did not take the photos of Kobe for investigative purposes, but shared them with firefighters who responded at the crash scene. Finally, under entertainment, Afrobeat superstar Temilade Okbeni, also known as Thames, has made history by becoming the Nigerian with the most entries on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart. The 27-year-old star achieved the feat with her fifth entry on Billboard, with Beyonce's move debuting at number 55 on the chart dated August 13, 2022. Move is the 10th track on Beyonce's Renaissance album and was co-written by Thames. The Nigerian songstress has now broken her four-entry tie with Afrobeat star Wizkid, with whom she previously held the record with the most Billboard Hot 100 entries by a Nigerian artist. Me and my girlfriends came up to play Fireworks and champagne, Congratulations to Thames. Uh, Rafai, do you want to say something really I mean, quickly I'm about so Thames? I'm so happy about her success, and I just wish her the very best. Yes. This was a girl that produced her song, that first hit song, Try Me, yeah. herself. And since then, she's not looked back. I know. She's up there on Billboard. You know what it means? And these are artists that, you know, without any big label push, anyway, now mm -hmm. they've got big labels behind them because they are now prominent and all of that. They do all the distribution, hence this international appeal. Mm -hmm. But these are people that produce these songs themselves and they came to the limelight. It's I'm fantastic. Just, I'm just so proud of her. Fantastic. And I wish her the very best. Women are she doing will only well go higher and in higher. music and sports, right? Sports, yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. I'm so happy for her, honestly. Congratulations to Thames. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing comments made by the governor of Plato State and Director General of the All Progressives Congress presidential campaign organization, Simon Lalong, 
who on Wednesday said that he is yet to receive any directive from Pope Francis to reject his recent appointment to lead the campaign for a Muslim Muslim ticket. The governor made the comment at the State House after a visit with President Muhammad Buhari. Let's take a quick listen to what he had to say before we take some reactions. I came back home and Khan welcomed me at the airport. Two days, uh, the next day, I addressed stakeholders of Plateau State and I told them, uh, I told them why I am accepted. And then there was jubilation and all of them accepted. I respect my being a Christian. I've been given the award by the Pope, the highest award. I still hold that award. The highest papal award. Let, I want people to know. Knight of St. Gregory the Great. I have it. One day, if you want, I wear my uniform and come here. <laughs> For those who are talking about, I don't even know where they are. I hold a papal knight. And as a Catholic, everything we do, we do it and we send the advice to the Pope. The Pope has not told me that what I'm doing is bad to accept uh, Director General. All right, let's take some reactions. This is from Carlo Mege, who wrote, Don't drag the Pope and the Catholic Church into this. The Catholic Church will not meddle with Nigerian politics. You're just on your own on this. Let your conscience judge you. No Muslim governor will ever accept this, your position, if we have Christian Christian ticket. While Glynid wrote, what's wrong with this man? Did God stop Adam and Eve from eating the forbidden fruit? He gave them a law and expected them to use their conscience. Did he consult the Pope before accepting the position? Or Larry Waji wrote, now why all the noise about Muslim Muslim ticket? Vote for your choice for crying out loud. You have Christian, Muslim, you also have Muslim Christian for God's sake. Enough of this pointless issue. Kingsley wrote, is there any law that forbids a Muslim Muslim ticket or Christian Christian ticket? Please educate me if I'm wrong. This is democracy. We all have a choice. Thank God we have Muslim Christian ticket and also Christian Muslim ticket. Mr. Ifeni, over to you on this. Can you answer Kingsley's uh, question? Yes. I don't know why uh, Governor Simon Lalong decided to bring the Pope into this matter. No idea. You see, instead of dousing this Muslim Muslim ticket agitation or whatever, it's the same people, the same APC people seem to have bringing new dimension to it. Because when you now talk about the Pope, oh, I'm a knight. What are you saying? Are Catholics who support you, follow you? Why are you bringing the Pope into the matter? It's a choice the party has made. Exactly. You have made a choice to serve as the Director General. Just move on. Don't bring your church into this matter. To say the Pope has not to... So if the Pope... You want the Pope to come and tell you not to take the position <laughs> or take the position. Just leave the Pope out of the matter. I think these um, politicians, they are just uh, complexifying the issues. Yeah. Nigerians are adjusting to this issue of Muslim Muslim tickets. Those who feel strong about it will just make their views known. Thank God we have options. Yes. You have uh, several... The very young, the not so young, the very old, not so old, on the ballot on that day. So I think politicians should stop dragging religion. That's what uh, Lalong has just done in an attempt. Because some people from his, his domains are protesting that why should he take it? If it was not considered for, for running mate, why should he not take this? Mm -hmm. Just, you have taken it. <laughs> you are a politician, you are a member of the APC. Right. There's no law, no criminal provision stopping Muslim, Muslim, or Christian, Christian. Yeah, you've Christian. answered yes. Kingsley's so question. So there's no yeah. law. Yeah. So if, uh, but people are just talking about sensitivity. It is. That is neither here a nor sensitive there. sensitive topic, yeah, But right. if you just think you are cool with it, you just want to photocopy 1993, then go ahead and <laughs> photocopy it and move on. Yeah, after, I thought it was quite funny. He says he wants to show us his uniform. I can't I'd wait actually to see, like to see I'd that. I'd love to see I, that. I think that would be really great. <laughs> but I think he's trying to say to his critics that stop being holier than the Pope. Yeah. If the Pope doesn't have a problem, you shouldn't have a problem. But I agree with you, Mr. Ifeni. I wish he'd left the Pope out of it because it actually reminds me of American politics. We have only the second 
Catholic president in American history in Joe Biden. The first was John F. Kennedy, and it was a huge struggle for him. There was a huge anti-Catholic sentiment in America at the time. And these religious issues don't just occur in Nigeria. He had a problem then because he was Catholic. And the thinking then was that if you're Catholic, you bow to the Vatican because your eternal soul is at risk. So you do not want to upset the Vatican. So you're going to ban birth control. You're going to cut off foreign aid to countries that use birth control as in how far are you going to take it? And JFK went to the Southern Baptist Conference, essentially into the lion's den, because don't forget, he was from the North yeah. in America, yeah. from New England, and he went to the South and to a Baptist conference to tell them that I am not the Catholic presidential candidate. I am the Democratic presidential exactly. candidate, who just happens to be Catholic. So just take that off the back burner, off the front burner. So the issue I find with APC is that even Kashim Shatima's speech, the day he was unveiled, it was completely lost in the row about fake bishops. And now we have this Pope issue. What would have been more effective for Governor Lalong as a devout Catholic to just support this Muslim Muslim ticket and give comfort to Catholics, especially those who are worried in the face of abductions of Catholic priests, the killings of Catholic priests. Oh, if Governor Lalang can trust this um, ticket and work with them, then perhaps I can too. That should be the message and none of the rest. Absolutely. Fine. You see, I want us to rest this Muslim Muslim ticket talk because there are issues. But the sad thing is, the same politicians, that when you bring it up, say, oh, it's a non-issue, forget mm. it, don't talk about it. They are the ones that are quick to talk about it. What Governor Lalong did is a dog whistle. He deliberately said this. Because, mm. you see, you talking about being a Catholic does not even come to play in this matter. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of faith. I believe in this. These are my convictions. Nobody can kill you for your conviction. You've decided to go with the Muslim Muslim. Nobody can kill you. It's Nigerian people that will decide. And they've got choices to take from. But not saying that, oh, I went, my people said, okay, they supported me. Mm. I'm a Catholic. I'm an order of St. Gregory. It's a Catholic dog whistle. Yeah. And please, I beg them to stop bringing religion or sectarianism into it. Because now what they're doing is, They've even brought sect into this matter. Oh, I'm a Catholic. Pentecostal, Zunko. So they have no nothing to say about it. Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Zunko. And that's why we keep begging the politicians. It's just like the other person that says, oh, Muslim, Muslim, Jigger, religion does not matter and all of that. The next thing, when they were availing the running mate, they went to bring some bishops there. What was that for? It was uncalled for. Just like the same person that said, oh, it doesn't matter. The next thing was in the church shine, praise the Lord. What was that for? It was uncalled for. We want to talk the issues. But they keep bringing this religion matter into it. What was the need for, uh, I guess they call the Pope and area? No, because you see, some groups supported his decision. And they have a right to support this decision. We are not running a a bully state here that yeah. you say, okay, you must not. He has every right to support anything he wants to support. Let's not forget that. But for me, the part I don't get is the part that we start to bring religion into it. He has to say, oh, I'm a Catholic, I'm this and that. Because if you also want to extrapolate, like Tundu said rightly, there are Catholic bishops that are being killed. And they have a right to, to voice out based on what is happening to them. As Catholic bishops are being killed, Methodist bishops who are being killed. Muslims too have been killed mm. for the sake of balancing. But for me, I would have loved, oh, we made a decision, we stood by it. Yes. That's it. I've taken this position. Stick to the point. It's about the campaign. Right. These are the issues we want to campaign on. Not now saying, oh, I'm a prominent person in the Catholic Church. I have X, Y, Z. If the Pope has not come, well, what is it that? that? <laughs> no, we're not saying, we don't want to talk about it. Well, okay, religion. We want to talk about the issues. The yeah. issues are so much on ground. Well said, Rufai. All right, then, we shall uh, take another story. Well, the story has been trending on social media. Governor Ben Ayadi of Cross River State has come under fire after a video surfaced online showing where his donation to a church was turned down by a bishop. Well, in the video, the governor could be heard saying that he's making 25 million naira donation on behalf of the people of the state the state government, his family, the chief justice of Nigeria, and the entire judiciary. He then went on to hail the bishop, 
who then told him to use the money to pay salaries of civil servants in the state. Let's take a look. On behalf of the people of Prussian State, the government, and my family, and on behalf of the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the entire judiciary, so that I save them, they have already whispered together and save them the stress of coming one by one. We have collectively come together to make a public donation of 25 million naira. Is that how you work for 25 million? And for our mission is great. I want to thank my neighbor governor. My, he's my brother. We are from the same part of the state. He will whisper to me later. Whatever he wants to give to me, let him put that package together and pay his salaries. Thank you. Oh, they are applauds by the congregation, says it all. This is so embarrassing to Nduabiola. So curly <laughs> mortification. I cannot imagine how the governor <laughs> felt because there's really no response to that. What yeah. can you actually validly yeah, I, say I, in the I face wish, of that? I wish because the man that's the point. You, can, you yeah. do have to pay salaries yes. before you go around distributing your largesse. Pay those you owe. That was a slap on the wrist. I could not believe it. I saw this video yesterday trending, and I thought to myself, "Wow, this bishop should be applauded." Rufai. What the what the. <laughs> Water. What does it mean? Water, water. I mean, yes. it's a social media slang. Okay. You know, it means you're, you're giving it back to somebody the way uh, he gave it back to you. Oh. But it just shows we have a problem in this country. The fact that, and going further, I, I, I don't think it should only be what he wanted to whisper to the bishops here. I don't see why the church cannot even return that 25 million naira to him. I don't think they got it, did Yeah, they? because, because mm. he said no, he's donating on behalf of the people mm -hmm. of the state. Did the people beg him to donate the on behalf of them? The, people the government, the government beg him. And his family. What accountability is there for the money? 25 million naira in this hard Nigeria. So somebody donate money on behalf of the people, himself, his family. Did the, did the state house of assembly approve the money <laughs> to spend? I don't have problem if it's his own personal donation and he said, on behalf of me, my family, from my own pocket, I remove the money and donate to the church. But he said, on behalf of the people, the states, who, who, who approved that money to go out? Well, first, how and much that, do they earn? And how much do they even earn? So that's the level of accountability we need to add. Also, all that Bishop just did mm. was to remind him of accountability. So I had to go research. In fact, a couple of months back, there was a protest over non-payment of salaries. But the state authorities said those uh, workers were not state workers. I think they had just employed them in 2018 and they had not confirmed them. So there was a protest on that. But apart from that, too, based on my research, I didn't see any other big protest over non payment of salary in the sake, in the spirit of balance. So I didn't see any, but only that one. And the persons and the, uh, I think the head of service of the state said, oh, they had not regularized the appointment. That was why that they had not been paid. But it goes back. People must pay their salaries. Just as I have something against this donation and somebody talking about salary, was the way I had something against the donation of the governor's wife to people in Kogi states, to people in their close circle, I think their own domestic staff and the likes, giving them over one million when most Kogi workers are not gotten salary. Hmm. We just need public accountability. That's, That's just all we need. That's it. Yes, accountability. Same you same. ask where the gov governor get that money from. I, I said, how, how much does he earn? Yes, mm. but he said on behalf of the state government, so mm -hmm. it's state money. State money. And it's part of the state government, so mm -hmm. that includes his family. That's how he has included everybody. But, <laughs> <laughs> was, the money budgeted, was the money budgeted for? Maybe, yeah. of course, uh, I don't see any assembly budgeting mm -hmm. that, but of course there are areas of funding captured in the, in the, in the budget uh, where you can spend money and don't account for, we know that. We do, don't yes, we? Yes, we, we <laughs> no, do. No. But kudos to that uh, bishop, bishop you yes, call him, the bishop, man, yeah. who, who told him, please go and pay salary. Yeah? That's it. It was even a good thing, the, the, the clergyman did not tell you your money perish with you, but he said, please Just use it go and do the, to pay the right salaries. Yes. And if there are people that are being owed, whether they were employed and you don't regularize, who is supposed to regularize people employed by government? Mm. Is it not the same government? 
2018, this 2021, you've not paid them if those are the only people that have not been paid. And you are donating 25 million. Mm. Go and regularize their, their employment, pay them from 2018 to 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These people have families. Have them be coping. Oh, they work for government. They work. They've not regularized their appointment. Can you imagine that kind of excuse? I know. Well said, Mr. Ifeni. Very well said. We shall take our final story. Well, in this bizarre video that is now making rounds on social media, a man could be seen angrily breaking a speed bump because he claims they are causing an obstruction. Well, let's take a quick look at this video before we uh, come back for a discussion. Hello. Okay, good morning. What? What can I do you for? Okay, good morning. Yeah, I can hear you. Please, eh? Uh, hello? Yeah, one minute. Let me get rid of this first. This is an obstruction to the road. All right? And under whatever circumstances, roads are meant to ease movement. And when that mission is not fulfilled, it is no longer considered a road. So if whatever road, there's an obstacle on it, it is never ever considered a road any longer. So I am not against bumps, but bumps should be at the appropriate positions. So he also said he has more work to do. He's going around breaking more speed bumps. What's going on here? He's a one-man wrecking shop. It's the funniest thing ever. It is so And he bizarre. said he's, he's not against bumps, no. but he has taken it upon himself to decide where those bumps go. And he's about to enforce that. I find it very strange. As far as I know, it's the Ministry of Works, whether at federal <laughs> level or at state level, that decides where bumps speed bumps are placed. Exactly. Not individuals. I mean, I understand... A lot of people complain about speed bumps because they cause your car, you know, your suspension will have issues, you know, wear and tear. Mm. But it, the idea is to control speed. So surely we have to balance it and leave it to the authorities to decide if a bump needs to be there or not, especially if there's like a school in the area, hospital, things like that. Not for the individual. Yeah, Certainly I, not. I mean, I think he needs some help. Uh, see, <laughs> I, I don't see, know. The truth is, uh, see, don't, don't laugh at this thing I'm going to say. Okay. You see, we need to build more psychiatrists, hospitals all over <laughs> Nigeria. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. See, because the stats are there to mm -hmm. back it up. A lot of Nigerians are suffering mental illness, you know, with the state of the economy and things like that. Because a full-bodied man, he left his car parked, started breaking bombs on the road. He's mm -hmm. had it. And he's just, you know, the hard work he's doing to break up. <laughs> a lot of hard work. Right. Like, there's something wrong, go. So, you see, and he's even trying to justify it. Because, ah, uh, no, no, no. He's breaking the law yeah. because he, he has no right to so. damage, so. you know, state property and the lights and all of that. But I think the man also, they need, we need to see more psychiatric hospital. And please, people should see more psychologists. Yeah. There, are, there are fewer psychologists to the population. But every once in a while, we should endeavor to see psychologists. Yes. Because we don't know the effect of all the things happening in this country, what is happening on our mental health. Yes. Um, most of us, our mental health is not okay. Yeah, this I is the worst with. I've seen so far. I mean, we've seen all those videos of these guys that go around um, destroying public property, like taking out rail tracks for sale and all of that. This is the worst I've seen so well, far. Well, clearly that's a residential area. Yeah. And you can appreciate why there should be bombs around that area. Yeah. Because there are a lot of reckless drivers who don't even know the difference between residential area and an expressway, right? And I have that right in front of me, where hmm. uh, the governor of Open State, Dr. Bernard, has done a good job creating good roads with bombs, even between bombs. You see, some people they will screech, and they don't even see the sign. There's even road sign, yeah. bomb ahead. They will speed. So I was even saying, telling my guys that perhaps we even need to add our own bomb. Because before, there's a school nearby, before they will run over somebody's child, mm -hmm. and you will not say sorry. Right. So I think this man needs to be arrested. I hope I, hope I have I've shown it out it's for identification purposes. Well, yes, I did that. <laughs> Just on the guy. I on oh, the guy. We need to protect our public property. <laughs> well, thank you all for your great analysis as always. That's all I have for you on What's Trending Today. I'll see you tomorrow.